Hi, I'm Clint Carney from System Sin, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a cool display bust from a pretty inexpensive mask. I have right here just a cheap mask that I ordered off of Amazon. Let me open it up so you can take a look. And yes, this is the Creature from the Black Lagoon. As you can see, this mask is in great shape. Nice fold lines and everything. <laughs> and you know, the latex isn't too thin. It's not bad. Um, but it also, you know, isn't movie quality or anything. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna have to do a number of things just to get this guy into good shape. I bought this guy for $12.99 on Amazon. You know, as if you're a mask collector, you already know that a really good mask can cost a lot of money. But I think, you know, you can take a mediocre looking mask and turn it into something really cool as long as the original sculpture is good and in this case uh, this mask looks pretty good sculpture wise you know again we got to get rid of these folds uh, it's gonna need a new paint job and I'm going to turn this into a display bust because as a collector you know I, I typically just like having my masks on the shelves instead of you know being wearable but uh, we are gonna try this guy on just for fun first and then we are going to turn him into something cool. Yep. Yep. That is a snug fit. We're going to see if we can't make this creature, you know, this uh, $12.99 creature look like, you know, it costs $13.99 or more. <laughs> The first step is just to heat up the mask with a hair dryer and bend it into the right shape to try to get rid of the fold lines that happened when the mask was shipped. Next, I'm going to cover the eye holes and the mouth holes with duct tape. I'm going to be filling this mask with an expandable foam and I don't want it to leak out through these holes. Then I pop the mask onto a styrofoam head and using this expandable foam that you can get at any hardware store, I fill in the gaps between the styrofoam head and the mask. In retrospect, I should have used a pourable foam because this kind of expanding foam isn't made for this purpose and it ended up making the mask a little lumpy, which I had to try to fix later. Next, I took this wooden base that I got at a craft store and drilled out a hole in the center. I took a piece of PVC pipe and using a two-part five-minute epoxy attached the pipe to the wooden base. Another unfortunate byproduct of the type of foam that I used was that it made the eyes bulge out in a really comical way. But really, if you look at the sculpture right here, you'll see that the eyes are a little too small for the head anyway, and so I went ahead and just cut them out, knowing that I would re-sculpt them later. My next step was to do a little sculpting. First I wanted to fix the lumps that were accidentally created when I filled the mask with the wrong kind of foam. So I used something called Freeform Air, which is a two-part epoxy that you can sculpt with, and it dries very fast, it dries lightweight, and it's very rigid. So I fixed the lumps on the head, and then I filled in the eye sockets. I wanted to build up the base next, and I didn't want to waste a lot of sculpting material, so I just filled in the bulk of the form with tinfoil and duct tape. After the basic shape was in place, I used more of the two-part epoxy Freeform Air, and sculpted in a basic shape around it. I wanted to keep it rough and rocky looking so that it might look like something you would find at the bottom of the Black Lagoon. Laziness set in and I didn't want to run out to buy something for the eyes. I did however have this foam clown nose on hand so I cut off bits of this and glued it in place. The foam will eventually be covered in epoxy as well so you won't be able to tell that it's porous. 
I next took the bust outside and sprayed it with something called Plasti Dip, just to give it an even coating of the same material all around. You can see that the foam eyes still look very porous, so I mixed together some two-part five-minute epoxy and coated the eyes with that to make them nice and glossy. I printed out a few reference images of the creature and just did some visual comparison between the creature from the movie and the sculpture. I already knew I was going to have to re-sculpt the eyes because I had cut those out. So I went to work on those to start with. At this stage, I used a product called Freeform Air Sculpt, which is similar to the product I used before, but this is a lot more rigid and easier to sculpt with. I tried to match the reference photo as best as I could to get the eye sockets correct. I also found that in the sculpture on this mask, the creature's mouth wasn't quite as wide as it is in the film, so I just extended it a bit to try to match the film look a little better. I then took a little more of the freeform sculpt and filled in some gaps that were still on the forehead. I had a little bit left over, and so I just added a little bit to the base to look like seaweed or something like that. Once the epoxy dried, I took it back outside and sprayed it with the Plasti Dip again. And now it's time to paint. Knowing that the final overall color on the creature is going to be green, I started my paint job by putting a red undercoat on. Although you won't see a lot of red in the final paint job, enough of it will show through just to make the skin tones seem a little more complex. After the whole creature was covered in red, I then took this tan kind of fleshy color and dry brushed it over the top of the sculpture. For the next step, I used green paint and thinned it very heavily with water to create a wash. I used the green wash to cover the whole sculpture, and this helped to tie in the fleshy color with the red color and really make it feel cohesive. Then I took a little bit of brown paint, used that on his eye sockets, on his mouth, and then under the shadowy parts of the big gills on the side of his head. I then took some yellow paint, mixed it a little bit with the flesh color, and went over some of the more prominent areas of the sculpture. I then added a little bit of red to the lips and around the eyes, and then added some black into the hole on the mouth. Next, I did a super crappy paint job on the eyes, which I would have to fix later. For one thing, I accidentally painted him so he was looking in two different directions. But there's pretty much nothing you can't fix, so don't worry about it if you mess up. For the final step in painting the creature's skin, I took some more yellow, I highlighted his warts, some wrinkles, his scales, and then the ridges of all of his gills. I then took the creature outside and sprayed him with an acrylic gloss clear coat. That makes him look nice and wet like he's fresh out of the lagoon. I took my Dremel and drilled out the pupils. I went back in with some yellow, some flesh tone, and some red to fix the irises. I used some more 5 minute epoxy to fill in the holes that I had dremeled into the pupils. The final step was to paint a very matte black back into the hole in the creature's mouth. And here he is finished. Isn't he pretty? And here he is with cool lights. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like this video and leave a comment below. I'm Clint Carney from System Sin, wishing you a happy Halloween.